This is Love Notes, Daily Devotions from Holy Trinity Lutheran Church. Grace and peace to you. Our text today is John, the 21st chapter, verses 15 through 25, the end of the Gospel of John. We might call this section the rehabilitation of Peter. It says, when they'd finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? And Peter says to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus says, Feed my lambs. That's the commandment. Feed my lambs. A second time he says to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And he said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And Jesus says to him, Tend my sheep. Now, some people make a lot of difference about feed my lambs and tend my sheep. I'm not sure there's really any difference. We shouldn't get too wrapped up in the minute differences between what it means to take care of those who have been put in the charge of Jesus. Remember, the good shepherd does not lose any of his sheep. And now it seems that Peter is being auditioned for the job of taking care of Jesus' sheep. But remember, Peter denied him three times. So Jesus says to him a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he said to him a third time, do you love me? And Peter said to him, Lord, you know everything. And we know that Jesus does. He knows Peter's heart. You know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. The three denials have been followed now by three proclamations of Peter's love for Jesus. Something has changed this man, and Jesus is plumbing the depths of that change. Now Jesus looks him in the eye, I suspect, and says, Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and go wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. Verse 19 in parentheses says, He said this to indicate the kind of death by which he would glorify God. There isn't anything in John's letters or gospel that tell us how Peter was finally died. The tradition, however, tells us that Peter was crucified, probably in Rome, probably after he had lived a, a pretty long life, after he had proclaimed Jesus every place that he went, and that when it came time to crucify him, he begged that he not be crucified like his Lord and be confused with him. And so they hung him upside down on the cross. That's what the tradition says. And to accomplish that, they had to put a belt around him because there were no feet to hold him up. I'm not sure the physical aspects of how crucifixion results in asphyxiation if you're hung upside down, and I'm not sure we need to know. The point of the matter is that Jesus knows that Peter is now going to give his life for the sake of the Father. And so he looks at him again and says, follow me. Follow me in love, follow me to the cross, follow me wherever I go, and that is the call of Jesus to all of us. In his book, The Cost of Discipleship, Dietrich Bonhoeffer explains that Discipleship is grace. It is free because it's offered by God without regard, without strings attached. But it is costly because it costs us our whole life to accept it. Peter is still Peter, though, and in verse 20 it says, He turned and he saw the disciple whom Jesus loved. There seems to be some kind of competition and camaraderie here. He was following them. He was the one who would recline next to Jesus at the supper and had said, Lord, who is it that is going to betray you? When Peter saw him, he said to Jesus, Lord, what about him? Peter does what we all do. 
I'm being called to die. What about that guy over there? Is he going to be called to die too? We start comparing who's in charge and who's most faithful and we want to keep score. Jesus' response is clear. He says to Peter, if it is my will that he remain until I come, come again for the second time, what is that to you? Follow me. In other words, follow me, don't follow him. We're told that a rumor spread among the brothers and sisters that this disciple then wouldn't die. But the beloved disciple, who's in the midst of this controversy, points out that Jesus did not say to him that he would not die. But if it is my will and that he remain until I come, what is that to you? It's kind of hyperbole, I think. If it is my will that he grow a second head, what is that to you? If it is my will that whatever it may be that this happened, then what is that to you? Don't be worrying about what Jesus has called other people to do when you have your own discipleship ahead of you. That is a message for the church and for every one of us. And then comes the end of the, of the, of the message. It says, this is the disciple who is testifying to these things and has written them. And we know that his testimony is true. But there are also many other things that Jesus did. If every one of them were written down, I suppose that the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. And I smile at the end of this gospel. It began with the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. The Word was made flesh and dwells among us. And now we're told that the whole world cannot tame what the Word gives us, even if we're written down. The Word cannot be contained by cross, by resurrection, by our unfaith or our faith. We've been called simply to follow, to love and to take up our cross. Amen.